How to take a bath. Take tub time to new heights of relaxation with these tips. You will need a natural bristle body brush, a thermometer, two washcloths, and moisturizer. Optional, bath salts, essential oil, herbs dried or fresh, powdered milk, beer, and a loofah. Pregnant women should not take hot baths, and people with high blood pressure, heart disease, or kidney problems should not add Epsom salt to their bath water. Step 1. Plan your bath. To promote sleep, take your bath 90 minutes before bedtime, and because the hot water can dry your skin, don't soak for more than 20 minutes. Step 2. If you plan to use bath salts, add them as you start to run your bath so that they dissolve completely. Use one cup for every 60 pounds you weigh. Step 3. As the tub fills, keep track of the temperature with a thermometer. You want the water to be about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which is ideal for relaxing muscles. Step 4. While your tub is filling, take a natural bristle body brush and gently rub your skin from your feet to your neck with upward strokes. This loosens dead skin and helps your body expel toxins. Step 5. Dip a clean washcloth in cold water and lay it on the side of the tub so you can put it on your forehead if you start to feel too hot. Step 6. Just before the tub is filled, add any extras like a diluted essential oil, fresh or dried herbs tied in a piece of muslin or cheesecloth, one or two cups of powdered milk, or even a few bottles of beer, which is the bath additive of choice in some Czech Republic spas. Milk contains lactic acid, a natural alpha hydroxyl acid that loosens dead skin. Step 7. Make tub time special by lighting candles, putting on some music, and pouring yourself a nightcap. Step 8. Toward the end of your bath, vigorously scrub your skin with a washcloth or loofah. Step 9. Take a quick cold shower to rinse off and tighten the skin. Step 10. Liberally apply moisturizer while your skin is still damp. Did you know? The world record for playing Monopoly in a bathtub is 99 hours. How to wash your hair. Hairdressers swear that shampooing the correct way does make a difference. You will need a wide tooth comb, shampoo, conditioner, a large towel, and a detangler or leave-in conditioner. Optional, a deep conditioner. Step one, untangle your hair with a wide toothed comb before you shower, or you'll have a hopeless tangled mess when you're done. Step two, next, loosen dirt and dead skin by massaging your scalp for a minute. Use the pads of your fingers, not the nails. Step three, thoroughly wet your hair with warm, not hot water. Very hot water damages hair shafts, causing flyaway hair. Don't wash your hair every day. All you'll get for your trouble are oily roots and brittle ends. Step four, pour a quarter-sized amount of shampoo into your hand, rub it between your palms, and then spread it evenly over your scalp. Using more shampoo than that will strip your hair's natural oils, leading to the frizzies. Step five, work up a lather for at least a minute. Step six, rinse thoroughly with warm water. Contrary to what you've probably heard, do not rinse hair until it squeaks or you'll be rinsing away the hair's natural oils. Step seven, squeeze your hair to remove excess water, then rub a quarter-sized amount of conditioner between your hands. Apply most of it to the ends of your hair where moisture is needed most. Leave it on for at least two minutes. If you have damaged hair, use a deep conditioner every few weeks according to directions. Step eight. Rinse the conditioner with warm water, adding a final blast of cold water to seal the cuticles, which makes hair really shine. Step nine, gently squeeze out excess water with a clean towel. Then wrap the towel around your head and let it absorb some more water. Hair is at its weakest and most prone to breakage when it's soaking wet. Step 10, spray on a little detangler or leave-in conditioner before combing your hair. Did you know? On average, hair grows about half an inch each month. How to take the ultimate relaxing bath. There's nothing like a warm, soothing soak to calm nerves and rejuvenate the body. Have a spa-like experience in your own home with these tips. You will need the ideal water temperature, relaxing aromas, bubble bath or effervescent bath tablets, bath salts, relaxing music, and 20 minutes to soak. Step one, get the water the ideal temperature for bathing, which is between 90 and 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Step two, close the door to seal in the steam that will open your pores and give your face a healthy glow. Fill the tub with bubbles or use effervescent bath tablets to add fragrance and skin softening oils. Step three, inhale the best scents for relaxation. Choose from basil, grapefruit, pine, lavender, tangerine, rose geranium, chamomile, lemongrass, 
and orange in the form of essential oils or scented bath products. If using scented candles, try lavender, patchouli, jasmine, juniper berry, or geranium. Step 4. Set the scene with dim lighting and relaxing music. If you enjoy singing, choose music that lets you sing along. Making your own music can help relieve stress. Consider leaving the reading materials or crossword puzzle for later. Holding the book or magazine above the water can cause neck strain. Step 5. Add bath salts made from either sea salt or Epsom salts to ease sore muscles and joints. Step 6. Relax in the tub for at least 20 minutes to let the salts do their job and give you the most benefit from your bath. Did you know? An average bath uses 30 to 50 gallons of water. How to make your own bath bombs. Add some fizzle and sizzle to bath time with a homemade bath bomb. You will need one cup of baking soda, a half cup of cornstarch, a half cup of citric acid, two and a half tablespoons of sweet almond oil, one eighth cup of distilled water, six drops of the essential oil of your choice, a spray bottle filled with witch hazel, molds, muffin tins, or ice cube trays, and tissue paper. Optional, one eighth cup of sodium laurel sulfoacetate, dried flower petals, zest of a citrus fruit, food coloring, colored plastic wrap, and ribbon. Step one, mix together the baking soda and the cornstarch in one bowl and the citric acid, almond oil, and distilled water in another. Find citric acid, also known as sour salt, in natural food stores, craft shops, and some supermarkets. If you want your bath bombs to foam, add 1 8 cup of sodium laurel sulfoacetate to the dry mixture once you've combined the other dry ingredients. Order it on the internet. Step 2. Lightly grease the molds with sweet almond oil. If you don't have multi-purpose craft molds, you can use muffin tins, ice cube trays, plastic Easter eggs that snap apart, or even Christmas ornament packages instead. Step 3. Slowly add the wet ingredients to the dry ingredients, mixing them with your hands. If the mixture is too dry to stick together, mist it with a little witch hazel, which you can find at drugstores. Dried flower petals, the zest of lemons, or other citrus fruits, or food coloring can be added to the mix. Step 4. Press the mixture into molds, let them sit for a few hours, remove, and let them dry for a week. Step 5. If you're giving the bath bombs as gifts, cover them with colored plastic wrap and tie with ribbon. Otherwise, cover them with tissue paper and store in a cool, dry place. Did you know, according to one survey, 24% of married women would rather have a bubble bath than sex? How to take a shower. You probably take a shower almost every day. You might as well do it right. You will need a natural bristle body brush, a loofah, soap or body wash, a bath towel, and moisturizer. Optional, a sauna, rosemary oil, a pH balanced cleanser, and a 100% Egyptian cotton bath towel. Step one, before showering, rub your skin with a natural bristle body brush to loosen dead skin. Start at your feet and brush upward. Step two, adjust the water to a warm temperature. Very hot water dries out the skin. If you have access to a sauna, spend five minutes beforehand working up a sweat to open your pores. Step three, wash your hair first and body last. Scrubbing strips your skin of some of its natural oils, after which you don't want it exposed to harsh, hot water for long. Step four, lather up a loofah with the cleanser of your choice. Because it dries completely between uses, it's less likely to attract bacteria than a washcloth. Plus, it exfoliates your skin. If you have dry or sensitive skin, use a pH balanced cleanser. Step five, scrub your body from top to bottom in that order. You want the dirt to head down the drain. Add rosemary oil to your loofah and rub any dimply areas. Fluid retention contributes to cellulite and rosemary is a natural diuretic. Step six, give your body a five second blast of cold water right before you turn off the water. It improves circulation and helps tighten skin. Step seven, Gently pat yourself dry with a bath towel. You don't want to rub away your skin's natural oils. Towels made of 100% Egyptian cotton are stronger, softer, and more absorbent than those made of other fabrics. Step eight, for better absorption, apply moisturizer while your skin is still damp. Did you know the average shower in the United States lasts 8.2 minutes? How to wash your hair scientifically. It's no joke. British researchers spent six months shampooing 500 volunteers until they perfected the precise technique for lustrous locks. You will need a shower, a thermometer, shampoo, measuring spoons, a stopwatch, conditioner, a wide-toothed comb, and a towel. 
Step 1. Run the water in your shower until a thermometer shows that it has reached 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit or 37.5 degrees centigrade. Step 2. Make sure your hair is thoroughly soaked before applying shampoo. Step 3. Drizzle a smidgen more than one teaspoon of shampoo over your scalp if you have short hair, about a half a teaspoon for medium hair, and two teaspoons for long hair. That's five, eight, and 10 milliliters, respectively. Step four, lather up for exactly 28 seconds using 20 rubs. Step five, rinse for exactly 22 seconds and repeat. Step six, apply a little less than half a teaspoon of conditioner to short hair, a bit less than one teaspoon to medium length hair, and a little over one teaspoon to long hair. That's two, four, and six milliliters, respectively. Step seven, work conditioner through your hair with a wide toothed comb. Leave on for 57 seconds, then rinse for 22 seconds. Step eight, gently pat your hair with a towel to remove excess water. Do not rub vigorously. If possible, let your hair air dry. Did you know? The average person loses 50 to 100 strands of hair from their head every day. How to take a Japanese bath. In Japan, most homes are equipped with Japanese-style baths, but not necessarily showers. The art of getting clean in a Japanese bath or ofuro takes some getting used to for most foreigners. You will need a Japanese ofuro, heated bath water, a washing area, and water for rinsing. Optional, a shower, a bucket, a towel, and soap. Step 1. Fill the ofuro with water heated to between 102 and 104 degrees Fahrenheit, which is much hotter than typical Western bath water. Step 2. Rinse yourself thoroughly in the washing area outside of the ofuro before stepping into the bath. The washing area outside the bath will typically include a hose shower. If it doesn't, remove water from the bath with a plastic bucket to rinse yourself. Step 3. Step slowly into the ofuro and make yourself comfortable. Savor the warmth of the bath. Step 4. Exit the ofuro when you have had enough or become too hot. Dry yourself with a towel after exiting the ofuro or wash yourself with soap prior to re-entering it. Rinse the soap off so you do not introduce any soap into the ofuro. Step 5. Do not drain the water in the ofuro if others will be bathing after you. Japanese custom is that all members of a household use the same bath water. Did you know? In Japan, bathing in a volcanic hot spring and onsen is considered a form of relaxation, not a way to get clean.